I'm just going to go over some of the uh, relevant configurations and settings for CRM. Either the customer licenses it or they do not. Using this education database as an example, um, I usually come in and just uh, check the company configuration licensing real quick. And you can see customer relationship management. So you can see it is both licensed and enabled in the system. As far as the company configurations, there's a CRM tab for that specifically. Let's look at that real quick. Sales, CRM, and essentially these fields, assuming it's licensed, must be set up before you can enter even a quote in the system. So just be advised that if you're unsure if they have it, go check licensing. Um, looking on the left side of the screen here, under the menu structure, you can see customer relationship management is under sales management. That's another dead giveaway. And as far as these configurations go, essentially you have to have a task set, even if it's a single task, basically tied to the territory. We'll look at that in a second. You have to have these marketing campaigns set up and a campaign requires a act marketing activity type. We'll look at that in the setup folder. And then reason codes. You actually have to have reason codes for a win, a loss, and then a CRM task, okay? If you do not have these set up, you cannot create a quote. Let's close company configuration and go back to the setup folder is what I usually use as kind of a uh, checklist. Let's see what's set up. Can we actually create a quote, for example? And I'm just gonna go through this top to bottom. Um, the country codes, it, it's kind of an aside, but it's a good idea to make sure you've got something out there in your country codes, because those are gonna get attached to a lot of these entities as well too, especially customers. And then uh, just again, going down through the list, you can see marketing activity type. So we have to have that as well as the marketing campaign. So I just do a quick search. And in this database, you can see they set up a couple if, it's just a matter of getting it to work. We usually set up one called DEF for default and just give it that name, okay? But you can see these are specific to things that you would expect uh, one of our clients to use. So direct mail, web-based, so on and so forth, okay? So you need the types, real simple codes. And as I said, the uh, marketing advertisement is optional, but the campaign is not. So you have to have at least one campaign. Again, even if it's just like a default, Take a look at what they have here. And you can see I've got some specific trade shows. You can have any number of these. I'm gonna go look at this customer relationship one. Okay, and as you can see, it, it's pretty straightforward, but there is basically a parent-child relationship. Sometimes people will set these up and say, oh, what's the event? <laughs> okay, so usually you have to have a default event and they can just be numbered one, two, three, but just be advised, campaign has to have at least a single event. Uh, and again, going down the list here, I believe reason codes, that's the next one. And everybody's probably familiar with these screens, but under the types, we have CRM specific types. You can see there's a CRM loss, CRM win, and CRM task. So we must have at least one code set up for this. We'll go take a look at their loss codes. Okay, and as you might imagine, this gives the CRM task, basically the life cycle of a quote. Well, if we lost it, why'd we lose it? Couldn't meet their delivery date, project was delayed, pricing factor, uh, quote didn't meet specs. You can see they've got some realistic ones here. Okay, so that's under loss. And if we look at CRM win, you can have any number, but again, you have to have at least one of these set up. And you can see they want, they could one win based on competitive pricing, you can see all these again, repeat customer. And then the CRM task, you do need at least one of these. And it can be as simple as, hey, just move to the next task. Pretty simple stuff. But again, you cannot even enter a quote until you get these set up. And just going down the list here, role codes. And these are more important for the task sets and tasks that we set up. And again, the role codes, typically what you see here, you're probably used to seeing buyers, sales management, things of like that nature but in the case of doing quotes and using a task set here you often see things like uh, the engineering process yeah we're actually building up the quote to figure out what it costs right that may be an engineering activity it could be customer service that's usually where it starts okay so various role codes are usually tied into these task sets so it's a good idea to get those squared away and set up in the system and sales region regions are optional even in crm Let's look at sales territories. These are critical, gotta have them. So we'll take a look at some of the ones set up in here. Do a select all, okay? And you can see like East Canada, 
you can see things like uh, the boundaries. Those are optional, of course, but things like the salesperson. Yes, those have to be tied to the territory. And the optional field here, task set. We'll look at some of these task sets, but usually it's a feature function. If you tie a task set to a territory, when you do a quote for a customer tied to that same territory, that is the default task set that comes in. If it's blank, then you would have to add the task set. And then finally, the tasks themselves, okay? So in the case of tasks, everybody probably knows it's just a like a to-do thing, right? So task sets at the very beginning, I'll typically see if none are set up. I'll usually set something up like a default task and then attach it to a set also called default. Again, just for the purpose to have a working task set out there. Uh, let me close this and this. Um, task types and statuses, also op optional, but basically the things you put in here will basically add more meaning, uh, more usefulness basically to your task sets as you do them. So for example, a task could be a to-do. A task could be a call to a customer. Uh, could be a meeting. It could be, hey, I'm just waiting, right? So again, task types, I usually recommend something very similar to that be set up just again to make it more useful. And as far as statuses, again, more so optional. If they don't have statuses set up, good idea to just set up like a default one, whatever the case is. But you can see these are realistic, real world, real world type statuses. It's a high priority task. It's just in process, it's pending management approval, so on and so forth. All these tie into your task sets. Uh, workforce, I've seen these set up 15 different ways from Sunday. But again, generally you want to set up workforce IDs, either person specific or function specific. I usually recommend function specific and then tying in the person contact or person contacts through the authorized users, which then link to the function and the role. Okay, so for people unaware of this link, um, the role codes become very, very important in task sets. The fact that you can even see and like complete a task is going to be based on these role codes, okay? And then, of course, this engineering manager, um, even though it's tied to this Aaron Christensen person, anybody in the authorized user list, uh, Aaron being the default one. So these people, basically system manager, Epicor, Epicor could be other people uh, set up as users in Epicor. Basically, they could perform and act basically in the same role as this engineering manager on the task sets. So all these things tie together to make you have a functional task set. If this stuff isn't set up properly, it doesn't work. Some of the other things that tie into this are things like territory security. I usually don't pe see people turning that on. If you do turn it on, just be advised it's gonna filter all kinds of things and suddenly people can't see stuff because you've turned on territory security. The task sets can also utilize global alerts. So we'll look at that in a second. So again, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of how CRM works. So if we just jump into the setup folder, we looked at all the things that had to be set up under general operations. Uh, basically, you get into some of these salesperson type tools. Ah, they're there. So things like the salesperson pipeline, you know, what's out there in the system by salesperson. The assumption is people are loading things up in the system so you can see these, but like the salesperson workbench. I don't know who else has used this in the system, but uh, Epicor doesn't make a lot of noise about this, but it's, it's actually pretty powerful. The WB tracker, that's the workbench tracker. So it's basically the same thing as salesperson workbench, but view only. Okay, so the concept here being, hey, let's go look at customer information, what's going on with them. You can see things like contacts, linked quotes, orders, jobs that have been created invoices, shipments, RMAs, service calls, if they implement that. And then, of course, things like the tasks and CRM-based calls. Again, that's pretty much CRM in a nutshell. Anybody have questions? Can you expand on how global alerts would be used with task sets? Sure. Let's go take a look at some of the tasks out there. Again, we're in the uh, education database. I'm not sure what they're going to have based there, but let's take a look at some of their tasks. That's a good question because there are a number of feature functions built into these that you put at the task level. 
So you can set priorities to these as well too, but you'll notice things like the uh, mandatory flag. So essentially, if you pull this task into a set, you can't skip it. Somebody has to basically complete the task, okay? And then finally, things like any approver. Um, we usually only set those when we're testing just to kind of avoid things like, hey, somebody's not in the authorized user list for that uh, work, you know, workforce ID and the, the role. Anyways, you can actually require a password <laughs> to complete the task. Uh, then, of course, things like send alerts. So send a global alert when the task is complete or send a global alert when it first becomes active in the task. So these can become pretty powerful when it's like, hey, we finished the design review, now it has to go to engineering, okay? And so it's kind of nice, we completed it, okay, well, who do we alert next, okay? And so when it's completed, you could say, okay, well, the next group, and you can actually set up uh, uh, person groups, if you were workforce groups, so that you can send an email to multiple people as well, too. Hopefully that answers your questions. Hope you have a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much. Want more Code of Bears Lunch and Learn? Check out our channel for more videos or contact us on our website for registration information.